Okay, everybody, the next data point we're going to look at, we looked at uh, atomic radius before, um, and we looked at the fact that as you go down a group, the radius gets larger because of more energy levels. And we looked at the fact that as you go across the periodic table from, uh, from left to right in a period, that the radius actually shrinks and gets smaller due to the fact that the nucleus is pulling harder on the same level, uh, same energy level, drawing that electron cloud in tighter. All right, so the next data point you want to look at, um, you know, when we look at the reactive elements, is to look at something called ionization energy. And again, this is, uh, again, a lab uh, number that is, is data actually collected, okay? And you'll see in this, in this word is the word ion and energy. So this is an energy value in joules, okay? And simply what this is, is scientists take the atoms into a lab, each of the elements into the lab, and what they do is they hit them with energy. So they put energy into the system, into a, 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 the gas state of the element, okay? And they, they push energy into it until the electrons pop off. So really what happens is you end up getting a plasma, you end up getting electrons coming off the atoms and you produce positive ions. And the minute these electrons come off, it produces, you know, a, uh, a notification for the scientists, and then they write down the number of joules or kilojoules needed to knock off these electrons. Okay, so really it's the, 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 the amount of energy required to remove the first most loosely bound electron from a gaseous atom. So I don't get crazy with the deep, you know, with the, with the, with the language here. It's just you're looking to see at what point does that loosely bound first electron come off. Sometimes this is called the first ionization energy. Uh, the second electron, if you want to pop off another one, that would be the second ionization energy. And again, you can go on all down the line to keep pulling electrons off. So they would, and they would tabulate these values. So think of it as the effort needed to pull off an electron. So we get some interesting results from this. Okay. Uh, don't forget that when you remove an electron, you create a positive ion, right? Because if you lose an electron, it becomes more positive. You lose two, it becomes two plus and so on. All right. The stronger the attraction for the electron. So this is really the information it gives us because you get an idea of how strong the nucleus is holding on to that electron by looking at the energy needed to remove it. So the stronger the attraction, the higher that uh, that number is going to be, right? It's going to be tougher to pull it off. Think about your favorite food. I use this analogy maybe in class where, and you'll see me do this, where um, if you really like your favorite food, if you're eating it and you really like the something, it's going to be very difficult for someone to take it away from you by force, right? They'll have to put in a lot of effort to do that. So if the nucleus is really attracting that electron, it's going to be very difficult to take off that electron, okay? Um so uh, it, 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 if you want to write this in a, in, a, in a reaction form, you would have a, a sodium atom plus the ionization energy going in. And then you're going to think about this being endothermic, right? Because it's going into the system. Again, we're still working on that endothermic, exothermic idea, right? And what's going to happen now is that atom, which is neutral, remember this originally was neutral, this now becomes a, a positive ion, okay? And then the elect that electron is now lost. Okay, so think of this, this as your, you know, the 3s1 electron in sodium, okay, and then it's gone, right, and now you have a, a, you know, a complete shell, and you can notice that the element gets smaller, positive ions end up getting smaller, we'll a little more about that later, okay, and then the electron is lost to go up by itself, so again, this would be a negative electron, all right, so what we find is interesting enough that as you go down, as you go down a group, as you go down in that direction, okay, Again, your radius is getting larger, okay? It becomes easier to pull off that electron because it's further away from the nucleus, okay? However, when you look at going across a period, okay, we find out that the attraction is greater. We would expect that ionization energy to get higher because as you go across a period, those radii are getting smaller, so it becomes more difficult to pull it off. All right, so you, I want you to really think about attraction. If you know the attraction and you're looking, you're thinking of the radius, then it's a good idea to think about this way it is. So if you to look at this in color standpoint, okay, and we just, you know, adjust. Um, we'll take a look at the lar your largest radius being down here, you know, and your smallest radius really being here. Again, this would be, you think of this being hydrogen, I guess, but we're going to look at the main body table. You'll see your high, your very, very high ionization energies 
are going to be right up in this section of the table where you have the most attraction. Okay. And a high radius, atomic radius. So if you're high radius, then you're t your electric, then that, well, you, sorry, a low atomic radius. Your radius is very small. That means those electrons are tighter to the nucleus. It's going to be tougher to see it. So, you know, you're talking about up here in the red zone, very high, a lot of effort to pull it off here. Well, if you look down here by cesium, you're talking about very low. So the alkali metals have very low ionization energies where the halogens and the upper corner here would have very high ionization energy. So difficult to pull off electrons. Okay. So again, it's just a data point and it really goes opposite the radius. So as the radius goes down, the IE goes up ionization energy. As the radius goes up, the IE goes down because of the attraction. You come and you can have less attraction over here. All right. And that's really what you want to know because eventually it's going to help to, to define what these, what these atoms are going to do. Okay. All right. So that's the ionization energy. Again, if you want to go to the second ionization energy, the third, we'll do a little more with that later. Okay. The next data point you probably heard before uh, is something called electronegativity. And we're going to do a lot with the electronegativity in the next unit. So this is something you need to make sure you understand it. Okay. And again, I'm abbreviating it as EN. Okay. Simply what electronegativity is. If you look at the, if you look at the name of this, this particular data point, electron negativity. So it's the ability to gain electrons to be negative. All right. Again, what's the ability of this electron or this element to gain electrons to become negative? All right. So really it's the ability of an atom to attract electrons, okay, to itself. Okay. And we think of it as a rating scale. I mean, there, there's, there's been a number of scientists that tried to calculate a number. We set it up as just looking at a lot of data and kind of rating elements as if on their ability to to gain electrons. Okay, you can also think about how hungry an element is for electrons. That's why I have this little bull. Is he hungry? You can see the big bull mouth here. I think those are funny pictures. So anyway, don't mind me. Okay, so how hungry is is something for electrons? All right, so that's what you're thinking. Is if an element is really hungry for electrons, it's got a high I E, uh, high E N. You can think about it as how hungry you are. For your favorite food. Uh, if you're a pizza lover, you would have, uh, on a scale of one to 10, you would be a 10. If you didn't like pizza, then you would be, who doesn't like pizza? If you would be on a scale of one to 10 and you didn't like pizza, you'd be a one. All right. So that's what you kind of, so this ranges from two, two values, 0 0.7 for cesium and 4.0 for fluorine. Again, if you're looking at the periodic table, again, cesium is going to be down here. Fluorine is going to be up here. This would be cesium down here. Again, cesium is going to be 0.7. Okay, fluorine is going to be 0.0. .0. So if you notice, we're starting to see some extremes in the table. Fluorine becomes the extreme and cesium becomes the extreme because they're on the opposite ends, and that's significant. All right, so metals. So we can start to define things. If I wanted to define a metal for you chemically, I would use the, these following things. I would say a weaker attraction for my, my variance of valence electrons. Okay. I would be more likely to lose electrons because I would have my high radius, right? And I would have my low, I would have my low IE, okay? But now I would also have a low EN, right? So that would help me define. I would have a low IE -E -N, okay? I would have a high radius, atomic radius, if you want to think of it that way. And that helps define my metals, what a metal is. Now, you may say, well, well, metal is shiny, conducts electricity, blah, blah, blah. You would be right, but those are properties of metals. We're defining what a metal actually is chemically. Okay. Now, if a metal does this, you guessed it, nonmetals do exactly the opposite. They would have a stronger attraction for electrons. They would tend to form negative ions. Uh, again, cations would be a plus ion. Anions would be... Okay, negative ions, a good way to remember cations is look at the plus in here. Plus means for cation, and think of this as a negative ion would be an anion. Don't say an onion, it's an, it's an anion. That would be a negative ion. Okay, and again, you have high IEEN because it's tougher to, to pluck off that electron. Why? Because the radius is very small. Again, the electrons are close to the nucleus, so it's going to be very tough to pull them off and more likely for that element to gain. Okay. So a couple of things. Why do we use the EN? Eventually, we find that elements together that have high differences in electronegativity often form very strong bonds. For example, if you have sodium that has a very low electronegativity of 0.9, gets together with chlorine, 
which has a very high electronegativity around 3.2, okay, there's going to be a very strong bond between this element as it gives electrons from one to the other. Okay, now how do I know this? Well, the electronegativity tells you who's going to get the electron. The one that has the better attraction is the one that's going to win the electron. Okay, so that's going to be important for moving forward into bonding. Right now, we're just defining what electronegativity is. Okay, and again, you're going to have all these numbers. You're not going to have to memorize the numbers to these things. You'll have them all on the table. All right. So again, really quickly, let's just look at, uh, you know, your your your. Here is your your, you know, elect not electronic. Yeah, here's your electronegativity values, uh, in this table. And again, really fast, you can really take a look at, you know, the numbers for francium being really low down here with your alkali metals and alkaline earth metals being very low, and you can see all the way up here, fluorine just about 4.0. And again, we're not going to go to three significant figures on this. We'll pretty much go to two. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about the, the decimal points here. But you can see very high up in this right-hand corner, very low down here in this left-hand corner, and pretty much stays very low for the alkali metals and the alkali earth metals. It's the transitions in the middle. Remember, we spoke about those being somewhere in between. All right? So again, gold surprisingly high holds on to its electrons pretty well. Okay, and it's fairly in an unreactive element. Okay, because it's a metal, it really holds its electrons fairly unreactive. So your unreactive elements, your unreactive metals, okay, are really kind of in this ver in this area of the table here, kind of in the middle, where you'd be very reactive here, very reactive here. Okay, you're going to lose electrons here. You're going to most likely gain electrons here, and again, you'll lose to gain going that way. All right. And again, you can see in the F block, very, very flat. Uh, a good way to see it in color here, great way to see it in a, a, a almost like a contour map here, where you can really see how high period two is, right? So period two is actually these elements here. And you can see how different they are even in their same column, how much this drops off. And we could talk about that a little bit later. You may want to see why there's such a big drop off here. Maybe you want to think about that as you actually raise going to the right with electronegativity. So an interesting way to see that, again, very low electronegativities here, high, very high to the right corner. All right? All right? So that's what we want to see in electronegativity. Again, electronegativity ends up being the most important part. All right? So a couple of just so some general summary of the trends here with electronegativity, ionization energy, and atomic radius. Okay, so your radius here, if I look through this really quickly, again, I'm going to go fast through this. Uh, the key is what is my attraction, okay? If my attraction is very high, okay, so I'm going to have high attraction here, again, going down a group. You're going to have high attraction here, okay, and low attraction to the nucleus here. You'll see as you radius, and again, you're thinking about that electron being out here. If the electron's out here, Okay, think about how close it is to the nucleus, which is in the middle. This is very far from the nucleus. You're going to have a large radius. Okay, here's your radius. It's large. It's going to be easier to pull it off, so you need less energy, okay, and you have less of a traction, all right, where the hydrogen would be closer to the nucleus, would have the most attraction and the highest IE, and everything else is in between, all right? So that's important. Then again, this is a group trend when you go down a group, okay? When we go across a group, okay, I'm sorry, across a period, okay, then my trend is a little different, right? When I go across a period, and I'll put all these values in here for you so you can see them. When you go across a period, again, your radius is larger for lithium. And then by the time you get across, your radius is very small for argon, right? And in that case, everything will switch, right? If you have a very large radius here, again, the radius would be here versus the radius being here. A large radius would mean it would be very easy to pull off an electron. A very small radius would mean it's very hard to pull off an electron. Okay, so you might notice something that I, E, and E, N basically go together. As one goes up, the other goes up. Okay, so you'll see if the ionization energy increases here, then it also increases to there from there. All right, and you can see the attraction lines. Remember, these are attraction lines that we drew before. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Think about this for me. Oxygen. Again, the extreme would be fluorine would be here. Okay. So that's my, so again, still, it's still the same trend. You'd see oxygen is definitely that way. All right. So again, very, very, very reactive here. Fluorine is going to be very reactive because if I was an electron, where do I want to go? I'm definitely going to get sucked into a fluorine atom with a very high electronegativity. 
All right. So those are your trends for A R I E and E N. Okay. Really important. You review this and go over this. There's a lot to do on here. There's a lot to know and think about. All right. And just think about the attraction because eventually we're going to take this to the to the bonding unit and you're going to have to know it pretty well. All right. So more attraction to the nucleus as you go across a period. All right. And that's it. We'll talk to you soon.